Hello, this is Pastor Larson at Trinity Lutheran Church in Delray Beach, Florida, inviting you to our Bible study. We record on Saturday and pre present it online on Sunday at 10, but you can watch, listen, and participate anytime. We're glad that you are here as well. Thank you for joining us this morning, and we're going to get right into our study. Last week, we talked about the, con the confident prayer of the Christian because we have the assurance that God is always listening. He hears and he answers every prayer in Jesus' name, as we spoke about last week. Today, I want to get into some misunderstandings that some people have about prayer some of the time. I suppose we could ask the question, is prayer optional? And then finally, if we have time, we'll get into the Lord's Prayer on a, an introductory basis, and not a line by line and word by word. So let's get started with some common misunderstandings about prayers. Prayer is, first of all, not an attempt to gain God's favor. Why not? Why isn't prayer an attempt to gain God's favor? Anybody? I was going to say, I think we're already in his favor. Yes, that's exactly right. And prayer couldn't gain his favor, could it? No. Is he glad when we pray? Certainly. Yes. 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 And those who have God's favor, who know it, are eager to talk to the God who has brought them grace and forgiveness through his son, Jesus Christ. Prayer is also not a means of grace. Now, that sounds like a theological idea, and it is to some extent. But I'm asking you the question, why do we say prayer is not a means of grace? A means through which God offers and gives forgiveness. Well, when we pray for forgiveness... The that is not the same as, because then it would be, it's a means yeah. for us, you know, to repent of our sins. Well, in... But it's his grace that forgives, you know, we're forgiven, Jesus died for us. So I'm not, sh I'm unclear on let, that one. Let me try and, let me try and clear that up because certainly we ask for forgiveness. But when God gives it, how does he give it? Not through the prayer, but in his answer, which he has already given in his word and in baptism and the Lord's Supper. And I'm mentioning the means of grace that God works through those means. In fact, you might say that they are an answer to prayer, but we have it before we ask. We could thank him for his word, which assures us of forgiveness. And Linda, when we pray to him and ask for forgiveness, you know that we already have it. And I want everyone who asks to know that God has promised. We have it in the, in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins. He puts the words on our lips to ask for it in, the, in that phrase. And he offers us forgiveness through our baptism and the Lord's Supper. But prayer itself is not a means for God to offer. It's not a channel through which he offers the forgiveness. You understand? It's, a, it's our access to God asking for it. Right. So yes. I think you have it. So if we're in God's favor, we're already in his grace? Yes, that's right. We live in a state of grace. Okay. As long as we believe in Jesus Christ. And he grants that too. And he will do everything in his power to keep us in that faith. I want you to have that assurance too, that he who began a good work in you shall bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. That's a big smile from God. 
Mm. I think sometimes we make it too difficult uh -huh. to try and figure to figure out maybe. Yes, that's our rational mind. Yeah. Simply accept the word. I love you. I forgive you. That's what God says every day. Mm -hmm. Don't ever forget it. Prayer also is not a means of grace because prayer itself is a work that we do. It's something that we do in response to his word. And it's our faith that, that, that leads us to obey. And one of our obediences, that's a bad word, huh? One of the ways that we show our obedience to God is to pray because he has commanded prayer. Um, Pastor, may I interrupt here or just say yes. something? Um, so I was thinking about prayer the other day uh, uh, along these lines and probably spurred on by our Bible study in that instead of prayer, it's, it's like praise. Praise. Uh, it's not, uh, but that's what we're doing in prayer, praising him. But then where does asking for forgiveness come in in the prayer? Is, is, is that a different thing? Anytime. There is no order to prayer other than the Lord's Prayer. Oh, yeah. None of the prayers in the Bible are any more than examples. I am going to make Jesus' prayers an exception to that, and we could study them in more detail. But the prayers of Paul and the prayers of Peter, the prayers of the Old Testament believers are examples of prayer. Now, your question about praise, uh, it can come anytime. There are many people who use ACTS, ACT, as their outline for prayer. Adoration, A, C, confession, T, thanksgiving, and S, supplication, which is a fancy word for asking God for the things that you want and need. ACTS, adoration, confession, Where was I? Thanksgiving. And, but there's no, uh, that's a, that's a man-made order. So if you're in the middle of, uh, of praise and you remember a sin that you want to ask for forgiveness, you always slide it in there. God is not going to say, well, your outline is all messed up. Why don't you, why don't you go back and write that down and then come back to me? God is not an English teacher. You know, I, I want to, I, I want to lighten up on that so that you don't feel self-conscious just talk to god in your own words and even if you have to say lord i'm sorry i don't have my words all figured out this morning because my mind is is jumbled up by a lot of cares and concerns but first of all i want to praise you for for taking time to listen to me a poor sinner because i have a lot of things messed up in my life you see how if you let yourself Think of God as the one who is just waiting, just waiting for you to talk to him. And as I say too, too many times, anytime, any place, anywhere about anything. So be free to do your prayers. And if a, an outline helps you, it, it's you that it's helping. Anyone else want to ask about that idea of the method or the content or the structure. All right. Any questions anytime? Just speak up and we'll hear you. Prayer is not a two-way conversation. Now I think that a lot of people are are a little bit troubled by this statement. But I have no scripture promise. And I have made a study of scripture for a long time. And I've studied the, the sentences of those who say uh, that it is a two-way conversation. I have many people, uh, friends, good friends, uh, some in this congregation who want to talk about this. And I'm open to talking about it. The first thing I say is that in special times in the Old Testament, God spoke to people. He had a message that he wanted to get through 
to that person, but most of the time he had something he wanted to get through to God's people who were going to listen to that person. Or he had a special direction uh, to someone as to how to gain victory over the enemies round about them. As you know, Israel was often surrounded by enemies, and David was surrounded by enemies, and many of his prayers um, asked God to destroy his enemies. Some of you have trouble with that. We'll take that up at another time. In the New Testament, there are some instances of God speaking to people directly. One of them is St. Paul, as recorded in Acts 9 and 22 and 26. So we have the specific instances uh, Zechariah, before the birth of Christ, is told that he's going to have a son. He didn't believe it. God says, okay, and then you can't talk for, uh, well, he didn't talk until the baby was born and John the Baptist was born. Now, these stories, you know, he did, he did talk to Mary. The Holy Spirit came, or the angel, I'm sorry, Gabriel. So there are special times when God made his communication direct to the person. Um, another big one, of course, is St. John, the apostle, and the book of Revelation is dictated to him that through that vision that he got. So people do have visions and dreams. Dreams are another way that God has spoken to his people. And I know of instances in real life, in today's life, where a person had a dream and it was a direction for their life and they followed it. The difficulty you have at the times when you believe God is speaking to you is, is it really God or is it your own thoughts or is it the evil one? That would be dangerous, wouldn't it? So you have to test it. You have to test it by the scriptures and you have to test it by following it. It's not dangerous or against God's law. And seeing whether God brings it to completion. Now, I've nearly preached a sermon on that, haven't I? Uh, but that, that's my summation. And now I want to leave it open to your questions and your concerns and your, your reaction uh, to these things. I don't want to leave you as, well, he just wouldn't want to talk about it. He wouldn't let me talk about it. Your turn. I think you covered a lot of that last week when we were asking about prayer. All right. Didn't want to leave it out today because it is one of the misunderstandings. Mm. I have 10 of them. <laughs> Maybe 11. All right, you can ask me anytime. I don't have I don't have rules here. Remember? Remember I said in class many many months and years ago there are no rules in my class. Uh, Maybe something along the way will trigger a question here. Well, sure. Uh, I'm here to answer your questions, not not just to get answers to mine. Well, let's see. Why is a clicker? Prayer is not a power. Now, I think probably two-thirds of the believers in the world are likely to talk about the power of prayer. Well, prayer is our asking God, and there's absolutely no power in that. The power is God's. When God answers according to his will and work, that's the power of God made known as an answer to our prayer. But if you want to keep on talking about the power that you unleash or that you, uh, whoop, wait a minute, wait a minute, the wrong subject of the verb. Remember I said once upon a time that all uh, theological sentences have God as their subject and we are the object. And God says to you, you talk to me anytime and I will answer. You, you pray and I will hear. So when I pray to God, I'm asking him to use his power to take those nasty increases in, in kappa 
free light chains and diminish them in Linda and in me. You hear me? Yeah. God can do that. And I hope that he will use the chemicals that we've got. And if he wants to work outside of the chemicals, that's a wonderful miracle. But I'm asking for God's power to be active. My prayer is only a plea, a, pet a petition, a wish, uh, an asking. You see how prayer brings us the answer to our prayer for humility? We, what is a wish? Prayer is a wish. Okay, well, let's, uh, and let's always keep uh, Walt Disney out of this. I think there are wonderful films, and by and large, they're positive. <laughs> In later years, they've gotten a little bit too political, but I'm not going into that. I'm just saying that the original Walt Disney, when you wish upon a star, I don't wish upon a star, I pray to God. The star is not my God. I guess we'll get to that in a minute. Instead right. of a, a wish, maybe the word hope would be better because we all, always hope on uh, hope the Lord. Yes, and you can use the word desire as long as it's not a sinful desire. Do you desire for God's will to be done? Yes, you do. Good question, Pastor Clem. Thank you. <laughs> there is a, uh, a, a, a wish... I you know, Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, D. No, that's okay. I just wanted to know if you could hear me. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You light up our screen. <laughs> you light up my star. No, no. Da, 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 I mean, you, have to, you have to pay a, pay a loyal royalty if you if you use it. So, <laughs> prayer is not a power. Let's go on. Prayer is no, no, no. here. You don't have problems with this one. No, oh, okay. People do. And I want to say to you that a misunderstanding about prayer is that we can pray to any of the other gods. There aren't any. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So prayer is only addressed to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to the triune God. Now, you can pray to God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit, and you can use any name that he has given you to use for prayer. So... In a way, you would might say there are no rules about how you address God. I told you last week that I use Lord God. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not a rule. You might follow the examples in Scripture, and they are not uniform. That would take you a long time to study all the prayers in the Bible and to <laughs> line up how the people talk to God and what they called him. So feel free, he would be saying, use any name you have, I've given you to address me. We are, we are always uh, uh, open. That's right. Always yes. open to pray. That also, prayer is not to be addressed to any other person, God, or power. I'm not going to talk today about the organizations that people join, the organizations that are largely given over to serving in uh, various ways. And I'm certainly not going to name them today. But yeah. in some of those organizations, they use a, such a generic name for God in order not to offend anyone that they offend, they wind up unintentionally, I'll say, unintentionally, they offend the true God. So we never talk to God that is not the true God. Would someone read Isaiah 45, 22, uh, if you can see it on the screen? Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. One God. You say that in the creed. I believe in one God. Okay. The God who has revealed himself in the Holy Scriptures. Not the God of your imagination. Not the generic God over all the earth. But the true God who made heaven and earth. You also say that in the creed. How's your lady God? Uh, Pastor Clem, we could study the creed sometime 
and uh, the, the various uh, 12 parts of the creed, that would be a good study. The prayer that we pray is not to be addressed to, be, to Mary, neither to her or through her. Uh, some Roman Catholics will say, I don't pray to Mary, I ask her to speak to the Father or to Jesus. But you can't use, me, you can't use Mary as a mediator because there's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy chapter 2. All right? It might be, if I have that reference correct. But you can't pray to Mary because she's not a god. And you can't pray to Mary because you have no scripture that would entitle you or instruct you to talk to her or through her. That is a misunderstanding that many people have over uh, Mary going to Elizabeth and Elizabeth telling her that she has the favor of God. Well, Such a beautiful women. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Those are beautiful women in the scriptures because oh, they obeyed uh, God and they yes. had faith in him. Okay, let's go on. Uh, prayers are not to be addressed to the saints. Who are the saints? The people who believed and who died and who are now with God. Waiting for the general resurrection of all flesh when they will receive a glorious body and join with us and all believers in heaven. Amen. But we have no, no prayer, no scripture promise in the Bible uh, telling us to pray to any of the saints. I don't have on my dashboard a patron saint. Um, who is it, Stephen, that they have? Christopher, wasn't it? Christopher. Uh, some people wear a Christopher medal on their uh, on a, a machine. Well, that's nice, but you, he's, that does do you no spiritual good. You might remember his example if you go back and study it. Nothing wrong in following the examples of, of great believers, but they were sinners as well. So we, we don't talk to or through any of the saints or to any other person. If you talk to them in your prayer, that's idolatry because you're giving to them what belongs to God alone. Now, you hear me speaking rather firmly on this. Amen. Well, um, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> uh, no, this is my faith, and this is my faith as formed by God's word. And I'm not going to depart from that. Wonderful. That's what Luther said. Could I ask a question regarding our Catholic brethren that you touched on? Uh, Hi, Bob. Rosaries. Uh, say again. I couldn't quite hear you. Saints and to Mary. You have a question. Go ahead. Yes, uh, rosaries are those uh, what our Catholic brethren pray to the the saints and to Mary. Yes. Yes, it says Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace. Mother of God, Mother of God, full Mother of grace. Hear us. You see, it 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 it, it fails at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Hi, oh. right, Bob. Did, did you have a good ride last night? Pastor, yeah. uh, I would... We're, we're, we'll talk later. We're listening to Pastor here, Larson. Thank you, Bobby. So we'll not talk to the saints. All right. Um, may I ask a question about rosaries? Yes. Um, it's not on my mind or anything, but I have a lot of Catholic friends and uh, people I know, rather. And... Well, well, who can tell them different? I mean, the, the, uh, there's probably, I don't know, are there more Catholics than Protestants? Or how oh, would yeah. they do that? Yeah, there, there are more Catholics than Protestants, but God doesn't work by... They're uh, all around us. A vote. <laughs> They're all around us. I love all believing Roman Catholics who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. Yes. They are, they are to be valued insofar as they depart in their beliefs, I would, if they wanted to talk about those things, gently, lovingly, 
and say, did you know? And, uh, but I don't get those opportunities very often. Now, here's when it comes up. When I was full-time and we had premarital counseling and one of the persons was from a Roman Catholic background, sometimes those things would come up. Now, it didn't directly impinge upon the, holy, the, state of, uh, the estate of holy matrimony into which they were going. But of my heart, if it came up in the discussion, I would gently take an opportunity to mention it and then say, if you want to, we can go into that at a later time. But I wasn't going to distract or spoil the premarital counseling in order to talk about the errors of the Roman Catholic Church. We're not going to do the Reformation in 20 minutes. Can't do that. Amen. Well, Pastor, uh, also, um, so I've had this friend really for, for over 13 years since I've been down here. And she's not here anymore. She's up in New York State, but sh she's Catholic. And so she goes through bouts of depression and all kinds of ups and downs, anxiety. And I remember talking to her once and she says, well, I, you know, trying to calm her or whatever. And she said she was going to pray to Mary. I said, well, blank, I'm not going to give her a name. I said, um, well, you really should play, pray to Jesus. And she says, well, you think I could do Mary this time? Because it's so embedded in them. Mm -hmm. She's trying to do the right thing, but she can't probably help it. They were taught from the time of their first communion as early as five or six years old. Yes. They were taught in uh, classes, if, especially if they went to Roman Catholic schools. And uh, my mother went to, uh, uh, lived in a Roman Catholic orphanage. Oh. Oh. So there was a lot of residual Roman Catholicism in, in her. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it troubled her. But uh, these things we do out of friendship and love, and we take... Um, all the patience that God gives us, and we wait for the opportunity, as you did. And if she prays to Mary that time, and she said, is it okay? Um, you can't say it's okay, but you say, well, next time when we get together, let's ask God through his son, Jesus Christ, who is mm -hmm. the mediator, you know, and mm -hmm. um, don't make it heavy. Make it yeah. okay. First Peter, First Peter uh, three fifteen tells us to do it with gentleness and respect. <laughs> yes. So we can do that. All right. Any other questions about these uh, prayers to saints or Mary? Praying to other gods who are not God is forbidden and has no promise of being heard. They are empty and w without any answer. Now, the problem was, you know, there's a logical policy that says, after this, therefore, because of this. If, if this happens and then something else happens, Bless you. might mistakenly attribute the first thing as a cause of the second thing, because it happened after it. If I prayed to a saint, because of it, and, and I had an illness, and I got better. I might say, well, I don't know about you, but I prayed to that saint, and I got better, so that saint must have helped me. You, you understand the logical fallacy there, don't you? Wonderful. The, the fact that it happened after does not establish cause. No. Good. I want you to read... The 1422. Who hasn't read would speak up. Are there any among the false gods of the nations that can bring rain? For you do all things. Amen. Okay. The heavens give showers, but not because someone prayed to the false gods. Right. We set our hope on you. All right. Someone else read Isaiah 44, 9 and 10, please. 
All who fashion idols are nothing, and the things that they delight in do not profit. Their witness neither see nor know that they may be put to shame. Who fashions a god or casts an idol that is profitable for nothing? In the Old Testament, those who went after other gods often made images. Mm -hmm. We don't find many images in our Western culture anymore other than when you go into some churches we were talking about, you will see icons or statues. And you get the impression that they may be praying to them. Well, you don't know unless you hear that. But when you, when you fashion a god, cast it out of silver or gold or stone or wood or any such thing, you have a God that cannot see, uh, cannot hear, cannot act, has no power. The Psalms and some passages in Isaiah are full of, of denunciations of those practices. Our God is a jealous God. He says that right at the head of the Ten Commandments. Remember? For I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers and so forth. Okay. So God is a jealous God, and that is a reasonable and perfect understanding that he doesn't want even one other God to compete with him. And because he is God, he has a right to do that. Am I too happy this morning? That's, that's, uh, that's all law, isn't it? Except the idea that there is a God who does hear. Okay. I don't know why this stops once in a while. So we'll keep on talking about the misunderstandings, all right? Have you ever heard of the name it, claim it philosophy in prayer? Name it. Name it, claim it. Have you ever heard of uh, what is sometimes called the prosperity gospel? And the first gospel, yes. <laughs> Everything goes right. How, how does it, it goes as... God wants you to be rich. God wants you to have. Yes. God wants you to prosper. Mm -hmm. Not to prosper that is in Jeremiah 29, which pastor has been preaching on. The prosperity gospel is a false gospel because it says, if you just name it, God will grant it. Mm -hmm. And he is under obligation to answer your prayer. Name it, claim it. I, I know a woman who, uh, when she heard that I was coming down with a cold, she said, well, if you name it, you claim it. You're coming yeah. down with a cold. Well, that was really backwards. But she said, if you name healing, you will not get that cold. Hmm. I turned away from her. She later left our congregation for a lot of issues, not political issues, but doctrinal issues. Well, that's another long story. I just... I just mean it really bothered me that, all right, I'll name a million dollars, so I'll get it, because I named it, I claim it. And if I don't get it, they'll say, well, you really didn't claim it with enough faith. I hesitate to bring up the long story of Johnny Erickson, who dove into the water and uh, injured her uh, spine uh, uh, and was uh, quadriplegic and uh, prayed hard with her boyfriend that she would be healed, and she wasn't healed, and she began to lose faith in God because he didn't heal her. Mm. That is the beginning of a very long story, which is she describes in her book and, and in the movie that I saw in 1950, in 1960, no, no, no in the 1970s, late 1970s. And it was really an overwhelming film because at the end she came to believe, to realize that God did not answer every prayer according to her will, but according to his will. And she went on to use that defect in her physical nature to, to talk to people about this in the proper scriptural way and to write books. And there may have been another movie, I don't recall. Anybody remember Johnny Erickson, J-O-N-I? Yes, yes, I remember, yes. but I don't remember books. 
Yeah. So that's, that's the basic story is he had a name it, claim it. And when God didn't yeah. answer it, God had failed her. Or she said, I guess I don't have enough faith. She's been know, on she, radio she, uh, quite a bit and still is on radio. So I is she still on the radio? Okay. Wonderful. Well, you see, I, I have a... She's a wonderful person. Yeah. person. She's a witness to what is true about it because she has gone through the false part. Sometimes we learn more by having a big mistake than we do have by getting it right the first time. It's a way that God deals with us. See, this can, this name it, claim it philosophy and prayer can lead some people to doubt God when their prayers are not answered according to their claim. And the reason that it's not true is this. If you say, I will name it, in the name of another person, such as in the name of Jesus, to do anything in the name of another person is not an invitation to claim our will above that person's will. I capitalize H because we're talking about Jesus here. Who will read John 14, 13? Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The thing that I underlined, so you will notice it, I will do it, Jesus said, that, and this is the purpose, that the Father will be glorified in connection with the Son, because he made the invitation to pray. Whatever you ask, this I will do, so that the Father may be glorified. The Father is not glorified in prayers that are against his will. It can't be. It's a contradiction. You understand? And you also have the passage in 1 John 5 that uh, Jesus is, that the Holy Spirit is speaking through John the Apostle to say, according to my will. According to his will, he hears us. And how is your dear wife? Our problem, Pastor, and you understand this because you taught it, our problem is that we don't know the Father's will. And if I rush on, we'll get to talk about that yet in this study today. To pray in Jesus' name is not a mantra or a power that we add to our prayer to send it up to heaven. Last week, we talked a little bit about praying, quote, in Jesus' name, end quote. When I add it at the end of the prayer, that's not the power. I'm merely saying that I'm praying on the basis of the relationship that you, O oh Lord, have established between me and you for your glory and for my joy. So I don't add it as if I tack this on, it'll get up to heaven or it'll get answered according to my will. That would be asking of God what he has not promised. Might God answer it anyway? Yes, and the answer may not be what we were looking for. God teaches us a lot. Any questions about, about that idea? In the name of. In the name. Okay, here's some another misunderstanding number 10. The misunderstanding is that at the end of every prayer, I must add, if it be your will. Amen. Is that true or false? If it be your will. I would think that if you're praying to the true God, it is always his will. Right. I think it's a I know, not a I think, right? <laughs> Judy. I know, I know. Maybe that's a better word. <laughs> uh, say the whole sentence in context. I must add, if it be your will. And what are you saying if if you add the word no? K-N-O-W, I believe. In that. Uh, well, that would be only if you were probably a Christian. If you weren't a Christian, you wouldn't know that. Well, that's true, but I'm talking here about us uh, believers. About us? I must always add, this is a true or false question. 
<laughs> it's a trick question. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is one of my famous trick questions. And it's always his will. And and, yeah. and and this is my answer. No, what? not always. <laughs> okay. Because we have this question, how do we know when to add, if it be your will, to our petitions? Oh, oh interesting. How do we know that? And there are two cases. And this is why it's a yes and a no. Oh. Okay, now what are the two cases? And this is probably going to be as far as we get this morning. I started recording at, uh, at 14. And 14 from 60 is uh, 50, 46. So how do we know when to add if it be your will? There are two cases. Number one, when we already know that our prayer is in accord with God's will. Well, how would we know that our prayer is in accord with God's will? That's a yeah. real tough one to answer, but not really, because there are two cases where we know our prayer is in accord with God's will. And number one is when we pray the Lord's will, the Lord's prayer. Yeah, I was going to say when when we probably address Him right off to the, right off the start. We pray the Lord's prayer. We are praying the prayer that He Himself gave us. And it says, "Our Father." Do you ever add at the end of the Lord's prayer, "If it be Your will"? No. No, no you I, pray for Thine is the kingdom and the power. It, and the yeah, power. I was going to say, yeah, it, it's in there. <laughs> it's in there already. Right. His will is that we have what he told us to pray for. Okay, and he will answer. There's another case when we know it's in accord with God's will. When we have a distinct scripture promise that yeah. is generic enough. Now, I can't go to God and say, I pray Hezekiah's prayer that I get 15 more years of life. <laughs> oh, you don't know how real that is. Mm. Mm. You don't know how real it is. Uh, maybe you do. Linda knows. <laughs> yeah. uh, when, when you have a so-called terminal disease and you, you go to Hezekiah in, uh, I think it's Isaiah 36. Or, <laughs> don't go to the book of Hezekiah, though. Don't read he the book of Hezekiah. <laughs> Aren't we all living in a terminal disease? I mean, really. <laughs> yes, I know. It's called sin. But I'm talking about the ones that that are called that by medicine. Yes. But you see, I can't pray, uh, heal me, uh, by using Hezekiah's prayer. In fact, Hezekiah was seeking the Lord's will too. If I have a scripture promise, here's a generic one. I will be with you always. Matthew 28. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't have to say, be with me, O Father, if it be your will. You know that. I, it, it, it's, I dare I use that word, no again. We wouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you, you read the scripture promises that are generic enough to apply to everybody and therefore to you. Okay. Pastor, yes. Is this where I'm wrong and therefore I'll learn it better? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tell us, uh, use more words. I want to understand what you're asking. Well, I, I used the word no and I put it in Judy's mouth and that was not fair. And oh. <laughs> so this is an error of mine and maybe I'll learn it stronger. Oh, uh, that's true. Sometimes when we're corrected, we learn it stronger. Mm -hmm. So now you know, if it be your will, I, I won't have to add it in all cases. And here are the two cases. Mm hmm. Because I actually tried with the Lord's Prayer to say at the end, in Jesus' will, and it didn't seem right when, after it last did. You, it, There's nothing wrong with it. It's not, it's not part of the prayer that he gave. Yeah. But he's the one that gave it, so you are praying in Jesus' name, even if you never say it. Let me yeah. use it that way. Now let's get the other case. And the other case is when there is no scripture promise that applies to our petition. Okay. So yesterday, I prayed for the safe travel. Uh, Jeannie and I prayed for the safe travel of, of a grandson and his fiance. I didn't add, if it be your will. It was sort of implied. 
Um, I didn't hear any bad news last night or this morning, so I, I know that they got here safely. Hmm. But when I don't have a scriptural promise that applies to my petition for the Kappa free light chains to be reduced to a very small number and not be in the hundreds, I don't know if it's God's will. But I'll pray it. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask if it is your will. I always want God's will to be done, even mm -hmm. if it's contrary to my will. If I, if it be, I will. Listen, you pull out the old hymnal. There's some beautiful hymns that I've mentioned before in these classes. In the back of the hymnal, under hymns of uh, comfort, that's not what it's called. And 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 one of them is is called uh, God's will is the will of God is always best. And if you if you find that it's in the it's on the internet. You can go TLH and, and look up all these old hymns and read them devotionally. I, I really commend that to you. Mm -hmm. They really speak to my spirit. And then my spirit in prayer speaks to God with those words. They, they're either a, con, a confession of truth or they are, sometimes both, or they are a, a prayer. And I read them when, I, when my, my heart is troubled. Mm -hmm. And I wish I knew them by heart. I wish. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. You know, I, uh, for the sake of time, I think I'm not going to go into is prayer optional. Oh. We'll talk about that next time if the, if the Lord wills. Mm -hmm. If the Lord wills. Yeah. So uh, if I stop, if I... Uh, if I pray and then uh, bring this to a close. Well, that's true. Any other comments that need to get in today? Okay. If I let us pray. Oh Lord, your will is always best. And we pray what you've asked us to pray. We praise you for answered prayers in the past. There are many of them, and we give you, you give you thanks for them. And we pray that you will form our prayers according to your will, so that when your ear hears them, they are readily accepted and answered. Bless us, O oh Father in heaven, that we may be glad all of our days and rejoice because we have a forgiving God, a promise of heaven, and a guide for this life until, until, until that day, Lord, we commend ourselves into your care, grant us your Holy Spirit, and the faith that moves mountains, in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 amen.